the whole time I was seeing him, I was kind of just using it as a psychology experiment. I didn't really, I didn't really like the guy. I more just wanted to see if I could break his heart. And <laughs> it was fun. So did you break his heart then? Just a wee bit. I hope I did a little damage. Wow. Okay. Why do you hope that you did a little damage? I like humbling men. You like humbling men? Yeah. It's like my pastime. Your pastime is humbling men. Mm -hmm. When bad things happen to me, this is a lesson from the universe or from God or from the creator to stand up and show who I am and who I can be and to mm. take all of the pain and anguish and disappointment and yeah. heartbreak and yeah. all of this and yeah. turn it into a force I can use for good and to make myself a better person. And I think if you don't approach life this way, that you're always going to struggle because life is hard for everybody. It's going to be hard. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. You need to be resilient. Since our society only chooses to focus on toxic masculinity, I'm here to provide you with my list of the top toxic femininity traits. Utter disdain for men. These are the women that categorize all men with the stereotypical toxic masculinity traits. Just because someone has a Y chromosome does not mean that their only intention is to sleep with you, cheat on you, or traumatize you with their uncontrollable aggression and anti-feminist behavior. Always trying to outman men. Same women who want to be equal to men also pray for the downfall of men. Amazing how that works. Ladies, if you spend your entire life trying to prove to men that you can be better than them, you'll attract none of them and kickstart the extinction of the human race. No accountability. Toxic women bask in oppression and victimhood. It's their go-to excuse whenever they're confronted with irrational behavior. If a woman instantly rationalizes her actions with her oppression, you're fighting a losing battle. Inflated egos. These are the women that have literally no respect for themselves, but feel that because they're a woman, they deserve a Wall Street billionaire with a purity ring who agrees with literally everything they say. Happy women don't leave good marriages. I left the good guy. I left the guy that everybody looks at and is like, that's a dad. That's a husband. That's how it's supposed to be. He did the dishes. He cleaned the house. He took the kids to school. He worked all day. He made good money. He supported us. Women that feel supported, women that feel happy and loved and validated, those women aren't leaving good marriages and good husbands. He was the good guy. Yeah, they do. So I'm here to tell you, it's okay to leave the good guy. It's okay to leave the good guy. So the next time a man says to you that women are tearing their families apart because they randomly woke up and decided that they wanted a divorce, send them this video. Yeah, she's absolutely full of shit, and she wants that to be the truth, but it's not the truth. Happy women who feel loved and validated and heard absolutely still leave their husbands. Now, is that all divorces? No, it's not. I'm going to say it because no one else is. Feminism's gone way too far. Okay, men can't even look in the same direction for too long at the gym because they're terrified someone's recording them and then blast them all over the internet later on. Can't ask for a phone number because he might also look like a creep. Really can't even exist at this point without apologizing. And I'm tired of it because they're the same women that complain that no man talks to them or approaches them. You know what? You want him to go up to you? You have to go up to him at this point because that's the reality you've all created. Women seem to be on the lookout for a business partner they can divorce and drain dry when the money's right. If a man dares to call her out on it, she slaps on the toxic label faster than you can say prenup. Suddenly, anything less than agreeable and compliant makes him the toxic one. It's as if toxic is her default insult for anyone who doesn't dance to her tune. This trend isn't limited to relationships. Even in academia, men are getting the short end of the stick. Despite being more qualified, women are getting priority for scholarships, particularly in STEM fields. It feels like a deliberate effort to undermine men in every facet of society. As Thomas Sowell pointed out, public intellectuals pontificating on topics they know little about are doing more harm than lying politicians. That's saying something. Just listen to this woman talk about toxic femininity. This behavior is the ultimate turn-off playbook. Ask a man for money or expect him to foot the bill, call him toxic, or grill him about his job right off the bat. The constant demands, entitlement, and self-centeredness never seem to take a break. It's not just a mood killer. It's a relationship killer. This attitude drives men away faster than you can say goodbye with absolute disgust and disdain. Women today seem to have forgotten how to play the game. They put in zero effort, show little interest in you, and are solely focused on themselves and what you can do for them. It's not that men are stingy or unwilling to help. It's just that if this behavior continues, Women are actually doing men a favor by saving their time, money, and sanity. Maybe not so much for the women themselves, though. 
It's baffling when a woman has a laundry list of preferences, but thinks a man is wrong for having just a few. Especially when most of her list is superficial, while the man's preferences are crucial for a healthy relationship. The phenomenon observed in so-called independent women, wherein they exhibit a fear of losing their independence due to lacking a paternal figure for provision and protection, is commonly referred to as the orphan complex, or orphan mindset. These individuals, having learned early in life that they cannot rely on others, often pursue their desires selfishly and obsessively, often at the expense of others. A prevalent issue among modern women is their constant need for stimulation. They tend to seek excitement elsewhere at the slightest hint of boredom or dissatisfaction, even while in a relationship, in pursuit of perpetual amusement. This behavior is further exacerbated by the influence of modern technology and society's diminishing attention span. Contemporary women frequently display tendencies towards selfishness and narcissism. They often evade taking responsibility for their actions, preferring to attribute their self-inflicted problems to external factors. They often exhibit a sense of entitlement, seeking special treatment, and expecting others to cater to their needs without reciprocity. This behavior, in essence, reflects a form of laziness. They consider employment only when they can retain all earnings for themselves, leaving their partners to bear the financial burden alone. Consequently, many find that being single is simpler, more cost-effective, and devoid of drama. The attempt by some women to convince indifferent men that a person's sexual history should not matter because they themselves do not care is akin to trying to persuade them that a man's present income is inconsequential, as he will eventually earn significantly more in the future. Rather than assessing a man based on his current status, they should consider his potential. Expanding our view beyond Western societies, it becomes apparent that men, both high value and average, now have greater prospects and choices in Asia than ever before. The cultural values in these regions differ significantly, with women displaying less entitlement and possessing a deeper understanding of men's desires and how to treat them. However, it would be a mistake to perceive these women as simple or easily manipulated, as some assertive feminists might suggest. In these cultures, men are more appreciated for their intrinsic value, without the pressure to meet certain superficial standards. Contrarily, boss babe feminists often struggle to support and uplift men, viewing such actions as a challenge to their empowered image. Instead, they may attempt to diminish a man's stature to align with their own. There has been a notable shift in male preferences over time. For instance, men in the 1970s typically found women with large buttocks unattractive. This contrasts sharply with the preferences of today's generation, which seems overly concerned with wealth and conformity. Perhaps a fitting moniker for Generation Z would be the robot or zombie generation, reflecting a perceived lack of individuality or vitality. Many women today demonstrate minimal interest in their partner's hobbies, favorite movies, or music. Their focus often centers solely on what men can provide for them, neglecting deeper connections. While it is true that independent women may not necessarily need a man, it begs the question, why would a man choose to be with a woman who neither needs nor desires him? A healthy relationship should ideally be based on mutual dependence, as exemplified in traditional marital vows across various cultures. For women who wish to uphold their morals and values without compromising themselves, it is imperative to stay true to oneself and resist changing for anyone else. Conversely, men often find themselves pressured to change for their partners. To men who hold firm to their values and principles, the advice is simple. Remain steadfast and let others appreciate you for who you are. Many men are disheartened by the burden of consistently approaching women, making the first moves and taking the lead in every aspect, only to encounter women who play hard to get, exploit them for material gains, and discard them when a wealthier suitor emerges. The concept of hypergamy, deeply ingrained in female nature, involves women seeking partners who are of higher socioeconomic status, often leading to women climbing the social ladder by transitioning from one partner to another perceived as more financially viable. While this dynamic may seem advantageous for women, it can be disheartening for men. Consider a scenario where a man works hard to cover his expenses, provide quality food, own a nice vehicle, 
and maintain a decent living space. He goes above and beyond to ensure his partner's happiness, using his savings to purchase a diamond ring, support her lifestyle, and even take her on trips. Now, picture the same woman receiving attention from a wealthy businessman who earns in a day what her boyfriend earns in a month. This man finds her attractive and inundates her with messages and direct messages. After meeting him, she is captivated by his wealth, showered with luxury items like handbags, heels, and watches. What he spends on her is insignificant to him, but for her current boyfriend, it represents everything. Subsequently, she leaves her boyfriend and starts a relationship with the wealthy businessman, callously abandoning the man who truly cared for her. However, the wealthy man eventually grows tired of her and ends the relationship after a few months, leaving her alone and pleading for her former boyfriend to take her back. While this scenario may sound like a plot from a drama or film, it is a harsh reality. Men experience this heartbreak frequently. They are often expected to conform to traditional gender roles, showering women with affection and attention, while women may feel entitled to mistreat, disrespect, and discard men simply because they have numerous admirers. Men frequently opt to leave these situations because they often feel expendable and unappreciated, valued only for what they can provide. While there are certainly good women out there, they can be challenging to find, with many already in relationships. Therefore, many men question the value of investing time and effort in such pursuits. If modern women truly desire a partner who can provide protection, support, and other qualities they seek in a man, they must demonstrate these same qualities themselves. This includes being loyal, supportive, honorable, and above all, loving the man unconditionally, irrespective of his financial status or appearance. One cannot simply wish for rain. They must be prepared to contend with the mud as well. That is the crux of the matter. E and that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.